Thank you for joining me for another episode of 100 Days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. And me sharing with you here on my YouTube channel, you can either follow the entire challenge or pickpocket different videos depending on what you prefer. Now, for those who are new to my face, my name is Anais. I joined the DevOps space about half a year ago after working for several years on blockchain. So I'm really excited about all of these tools and I hope to share this excitement with you through this channel. You can also see all of my public notes in my public notion page. So they are all related to different videos. Check those out, link below. And let's get started with today's content. We're gonna be looking at K3S. What is K3S? Now you might be thinking, Anais, another Kubernetes distribution. What? So uh, let's break it down. K3S is a different Kubernetes distribution that is used for different purposes than Kubernetes K8S or local Kubernetes clusters such as MicroKids, MiniKubes, and so on. I have had different episodes on uh, MicroKids and MiniKube and how you can install those locally on your machine to play around with to have a Kubernetes cluster where you can try out different tools. Now check those out, they are linked below as well, <laughs> probably. Um, now why would you use K3S? Well, it's specifically developed for deployment situations, deployment purposes. You might want to install an application, run an application somewhere, a continuous application somewhere in a resource constrained environment. Think about IoT devices, think about Raspberry Pis, anything, any hardware that has resource constraints. So you can't just, um, well, pay more for your cloud provider or just uh, use your entire machine space or whatever. It's really resource constrained, it's something um, where you can't just run whatever you want to. <laughs> and what it basically does, it stripped away a lot of the components that um, normal Kubernetes, let's say, has, and focus on making it as small as possible, as compact as possible, uh, that resulted in K3S. Now, K3S has been developed by Ranger Labs. They originally wanted to develop something called Ryo, 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 I want to say Ryo, no, Ryo chat, Ryo. And Throughout the development, they realized, oh, this could be its own standalone tool. No, it's K3S is a CNCF sandbox project, and it's fully recognized as a separate Kubernetes distribution. So that's amazing. Now <laughs> let's head over to what I've prepared. So I'm right here on my Notion page, also linked below with my notes for today, day 25, on K3S and K in Ketchup. <laughs> it's pronounced Ketchup. Um, now here's an overview of K3S. So if you prefer a written overview, more detailed, have a look at that. If you are curious about the difference between K3S and uh, Kates, <laughs> which is basically Kubernetes itself, um, the original distribution, uh, have a look at this video. So K3S is basically, the name comes from three being smaller than eight. And in the eight in Kates, as in my, it's in Kubernetes, comes from the eight letters that are between the K and the S in Kubernetes. So, if you are interested in a deep dive in K3S, the differences and how it's used and why you would use and so on, and answers to all of these questions, have a look at the live stream I recorded with Alex last week. Now here are additional several use cases for K3S. K3S is specifically designed for deployment environments. You could also run it in your continuous integration pipeline to do specific tests on a cluster and so on, right? So anything that's quite resource restrained, you can use K3S on. Now, K3S, there about five different ways apparently to install it. I've tried, I don't know, two I think. So you can go ahead and on, let me show you, on the K3S site, you can basically install K3S with one command. And then in the next one, you ultimately have the notes. You have access to the notes. Now you can go ahead and go to the documentation. Now here's an overview. What is it? Quick start guide. How do you get started? So it shows you, you can install and then you can also join multiple nodes. Now you have to make sure that those nodes can communicate. So if they are not on the same network, those nodes, you have to use a load balancer for instance, right? So we're gonna set that up now. We're gonna go ahead and uh, use DigitalOcean droplets. So we're gonna go to our droplets page. This is my DigitalOcean page <laughs> account. I have a resource pool of three nodes right now for my Kubernetes um, cluster on my DigitalOcean. Now we can go ahead and create a droplet, which we're gonna do right now. So I want to have a droplet 
and I want this droplet to be just basic Ubuntu, just all the basics. I just want to have a quick demonstration. Now we're going to SSH into it. We're going to use my SSH key and then we're just going to go ahead and maybe tag as an uh, example. I like to give things tags so I find them later on. So we're going to go ahead and create that. If you have a Raspberry Pi, you can use your Raspberry Pi instead, right? Now, here's a load balancer that failed that I'm going to destroy now. Always destroy your resources while the other thing is spinning up. So, destroy. And <laughs> I like to play around with, with those resources and try out different things. And then I should remember destroying those things. <laughs> um, no, I do. So, as you can see, here's our IP address with which we can access it. Do we gonna need a second? Maybe. <laughs> and then we have here our, well, our droplet. So we can have a look at that. Nothing too fancy. Um, if you want to access it, you can access it. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to our terminal. And I have Doctal installed. I also have kubectl installed. And I have uh, K3S, no, 3S up installed, catch up. So we can go and do doctal, doctal, and then whoop, here, have a look at our droplets. So as you can see, they are all active right now, and this is the droplet that we're going to be using now. So to communicate with the droplet, we should be able to communicate with the droplet since we have SSH access set up. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the catch up documentation. And you're just going to follow this basic line here, okay? Just this really basics here now we are gonna go ahead and so we just copy paste this and this is gonna refer to our IP address over here and once we have that we want to set our user and it's all really basics and then with this command really simple straightforward we can install K3 is up on our droplet, on our virtual machine. So a droplet is more or less like a virtual machine. I'm not too familiar with the digital ocean architecture for <laughs> droplets. So maybe there's a difference between the, like I'm not too sure about the difference between the nodes that have from my cluster and the droplets themselves. They might be similar, they might be quite similar. Now we can access what we've just created, our node as like, oh, so I have to actually place here those little oops. <laughs> and then I can access my cluster, just be switching to it and I have access to that node. Now this is going to be a master node that's running here. As you can see, this is all the information. I'm not going to expand all of it since that's quite a lot. I mean, I could go like this, right? And then we can see it all nicely. So. If I'm where to, well, I could set up another another node, which is then can become the agent node, right? So I could go ahead and do that. However, in my case, they would be if I use a droplet again, they would be on a different on a different address on a different um, network, and then I would need a load balancer or similar for them to communicate. Now, this will, for example, work if you have multiple Raspberry Pis. <laughs> then um, you could install basically on one of them. You can use them as like the main, the main node. And then you can run the other ones as the agents or the worker nodes. And it's pretty straightforward, especially when you use Ketchup. And I'm going to try it out and make a specific tutorial on how you can set up your Raspberry Pis to communicate with each other. Uh, but that's basically how you could use K3S and catch up. <laughs> so. Now this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, please do remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I would highly appreciate your support. Also, I'm going to be releasing one video each day of this week. So you might want to stay notified for that. Now I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.